Hi everyone, I'm Lilo Granger, an undergraduate student at the ETH and EPFL in Switzerland, and I have the honor to present you my semester project, Wireless Attack Evaluation in a Cyber Avionics Lab. So first, a little overview of my presentation. I will um, firstly tell you about our motivations for the Avionics Lab and also a bit of background. Then I will briefly tell you about um, general avionics systems and their security. So a bit of theory before diving into the results. And finally, a little conclusion. So the motivation um, for GPS and mode spoofing, we first need to know that you may have seen this uh, picture a lot of time now. But um, this is an overview of communication technologies in aviation. And our focus lies so in GPS and uh, transponders, that is, modus messages between aircraft. And as you can see uh, on the right, those are used during almost all flight phases. So our first motivation was that until now, there has been over two decades of research, so several um, spoofing techniques and simulation have been done, but also detection and countermeasures have been thought of. But when we come to practice, actually very few practical attacks have been publicly shown, most of them being military events. So our main motivation was to show in practice what was done in theory until now. And as a security maxim says, the only way to really draw attention and for vulnerabilities to be taken seriously is to show them in practice. Other motivation were that um, GPS and motor spoofing are a threat to critical avionic systems especially because of our heavy reliance on GNSS data nowadays, but also because ADSB, for example, will be even more integrated in next generation programs. Hence, the idea to work in a Navionics lab. So I had um, the chance to work with real Avionics hardware. This on the left is our navigator. And something I had to mention is that this is a manufacturer independent um, standard issue, especially because um, this device manufacturer told us that um, they actually implemented only the uh, MOPS, so minimum operational performance standard, and nothing more, nothing less. I also had uh, the chance to test different types of receiver, of uh, transmitters. So a more professional one, the LabSat, and a more accessible and cheaper one, a software defined radio or USRP. We also had a smaller receiver, uh, which you can see here, uh, that allowed us to test everything before moving on to the navigator. So this is a, an overview of our setup. Both transmitting and uh, receiving antennas were put into a Faraday cage, and both sides were connected to a computer uh, to monitor and control the signals. So then, uh, a little bit of theory. For those who are very familiar with it, please bear, bear with me for a few minutes until we get to the real stuff. So first, the global navigation satellite systems. We generally speak about constellations. There are several of them. The most famous and used one being the GPS from the USA. But there exist also others, such as Galileo in Europe, for example. The GPS signal can be decomposed in different parts. 
uh, one of them being the navigation message, which allows the receiver to compute its position, velocity, and time, but also transmits almanac and ephemeris data, that is, the approximate position of satellites in the constellation and the precise location of the satellite um, sending the signal. The signal is also kind of timestamped, which allows the receiver to compute the pseudo range, so its distance from itself to the satellite transmitting the signal. Considering its security, surprisingly or not, it is also it is almost inexistent. So it has no encryption for civilian use and no authentication for now. And its main weakness is that uh, it is a very weak signal. So an analogy that I really like is that its strength is similar to a light bulb seen from 16,000 kilometers away. So it is very open to jamming and spoofing, which is what we focus on. Then MODIS transponders, it is part of the secondary surveillance radar. And it is it has uh, multiple uplink and downlink formats, UF and DF. Some of them allowing the automatic dependent surveillance broadcast service, or ADSB, and the traffic collision avoidance system, or TKIS. Considering its security, um, apart from the strict formatting and the transmission rate, it has no encryption nor authentication. So ADSB depends on GNSS data and on internal systems of an aircraft. And uh, it uh, provides additional info to ground station and other aircraft in the vicinity, such as position, altitude, speed, and so on, which can be distinguished within a message uh, thanks to its site code. The traffic collision avoidance system uh, was designed to reduce risk of collision between aircraft. And it, def it defined, um, defined the protected volume of airspace, which is itself defined uh, with thresholds with respect to the closest point of approach, or CPA. And to detect an intruder, it will first listen to uh, DF-11 and ADSB messages. Then when uh, the intruder is within surveillance range, it will start interrogated with UF-0. And uh, finally, when it's within resolution adversary range, or area range, it will declare it as a threat. Something worth mentioning is that the closer the intruder is, the faster the interrogation rate will be. So now that uh, we have everything we need, let's get to the results. First, about GPS spoofing. So as mentioned earlier, we had this smaller receiver, which uh, served as an entry-level target. and allowed us to test a lot of parameters. Too much for me to tell you all about now, but what can, I can briefly tell you about is, for example, the comparison between USRP and the LabSat. So on the right, the yellow bars represent the time for the receiver to lock onto the spoofed signal. And as you can see, the LabSat is much more stable and less volatile than uh, the USRP. Otherwise, it gives pretty much similar results, even though the USRP transmitted only a GPS signal and not other constellation as the lab set could do, and also didn't transmit any almanac data. Then moving on to the navigator, after a few experiments, um, we discovered that actually the only parameter that mattered was time. And so the only thing that was needed was patience. And with that in mind, uh, we were able to uh, 
static location. I'm waiting for my PowerPoint. There. We're able to spur for a static location, but also flight simulation or even takeover. And as a little reminder, we are based in Switzerland, so a plane, uh, a map showing up in the United States of America isn't really normal. Then a few uh, interesting remarks I wanted to tell you about is uh, first there is uh, first uh, the timing and synchronization of the signal. So actually, by sending a synchronized signal to the receiver's clock, uh, we were able to speed up the acquisition process. Then uh, the navigator had actually no dead recording. So by sending a first signal locating us somewhere and then sending a second synchronized signal uh, locating us at a complete different place, the navigator was still accepting it. As you can see here with the Eastern and Western coordinates. And then finally, we had a comparison between the USRP and the LabSat. As earlier, it gave the same results except for uh, maybe the stability of the signals. As you can see here on the left with the LabSat, it is much more stable than the USRP on the right, but also very much more suspicious. Then mo moving on to mode spoofing. So first with EDSB only messages, and again, on the smaller receiver, actually this uh, receiver was accepting pretty much everything we sent. So it was quite easy to um, spoof a single aircraft or to flood it with several one to ones. Then attacking the navigator was a bit trickier, but uh, we, su we succeeded in doing so too. First, we had to spoof its GPS to activate ADSB. And also, it needed actually enough messages to track the intruder. But otherwise, as you can see, we were able to spoof a single aircraft or several random ones. Uh, concerning non ADSB messages, so attacking the tickets. Uh, first, we had to um, to activate it. Um, we had to feed a radio altitude. This was done with a computer directly connected to the navigator and the software copilot. Unfortunately, with uh, the time at our disposal, we weren't able to successfully spoof the tickets. The reason why remains uh, at large. Maybe it was a question of expected messages and content, or most likely the timing, and such as, for example, the, the round trip times of the messages. So this is something that is actually worked on now. So why does this work matter? Well, first, we clearly proved that real avionic hardware is as vulnerable as theory says, and we just need a little bit more engineering to understand the remaining black boxes, such as for the tickets. And to conclude, um, GPS and modus spoofing are a serious and accessible threat, first because it targets critical avionic systems, but also be because it is feasible with, with a software-defined radios, and as we showed, we actually use very few resources. Then also, this is a manufacturer independent issue, and we really need more independent security research to verify industry claims and the state of the art. Thank you for listening to me, and I am open to every questions 
you may have.